This one is one of those that if you see how to do it today, you'll probably think it's pretty easy. There'll be one of these questions on the diploma for sure, maybe two. But it's got a weird concept to it that once you kind of see it, you're like, okay, I could get that now. Um, but it is, again, knowing your language, right? We've been dealing with probability, and now we're going to be talking about odds. And odds are very different, obviously, or we would not be spending the day on it. But they're so close to uh, kind of how they're looked at. They get very, very confusing, okay? So when we talk about odds, we want to see why is odds different than probability. And sometimes they'll give me the odds, ask for the probability. Sometimes they'll give you the probability, ask for the odds. They'll be asking for odds for, odds against. All of this language that with, without it, you're, you, wouldn't, you would struggle greatly on this one. Now, an oil and vinegar salad dressing is made of two parts oil to one parts vinegar. So the ratio of oil to vinegar is two to one. So what fraction, now maybe I just ask this, like what's, obviously probability doesn't make sense here, right? But what fraction of the dressing is oil? Okay. Two over one? Two over three. Okay. What's the formula for it then? The formula for this. Okay. I'll write down the two over three. What do you think the two stands for? Oil. What does the three stand for? The total. Okay, so you're going to have to come to terms with that, right? Uh, and you can, you can imagine what the other uh, distractors would be on that multiple choice, right? Um, so all of these, there's actually a lot of questions that can be asked here. They could tell you what, uh, you know, they could tell you the probability and ask for the ratio. Or the odds, I should say. So you can go back and forth between these, okay? So here's going to be some like weird language right now, and we want to talk about it. Now, odds express a level of confidence about uh, an event occurrence occurring. The odds in favor of an event occurring are given by the ratio. Now, it can be written over top of each other or with the colon in between. Now, this is, this stands for <coughs> the probability of A occurring and what does that stand for? That's not A. So to the probability of not A occurring. So that would be the probability for Right? We always put the one first. That's probability for that event occurring. And it goes for, it's always for, colon, against. Or odds against would be against, comma, for. Okay? And we're, we'll do some of these, obviously, so you get this. So odds against, so this would be odds in favor this is odds against. Now, do you see how odds against goes first or on the top? Again, subtle. Once you've seen it, it's going to make sense. And if the probability against is the complement of, of four, then the two should always add up to one. So probability against should be one minus probability four. And 1 minus against will be 4. So here's the other thing we just talked about right now. This was the example with the uh, salad dressing and the oil. Odds in favor of an event occurring are M to N, right? That's favor. That's against. What would be the probability then? M occurring over m plus n, which we call the total. So 
So if I was in your shoes, I'd be asked, well, what kind of questions are they, how are they going to give it to me and what kind of things are they going to ask? And through today, we're going to try to get through all the different ways they can ask things. Okay? Again, they will have at least one of these in the diploma. Easy, fast question if you understand what they're asking. Now, the odds in favor of Marcia passing her driver's test, the first try, are 5 to 3. Okay, now that's not pro in probability. Probabilities will always add up to 1. But 5 to 3. So, what are the odds against? What are the odds against? 3, 2, what is the probability that she will pass her driver's test? So we're doing probability of pass would be 5 out of 8. Okay, and just on the side, because total is 3 plus 5. It's kind of like she's going to if she took this test eight times, five of the times she would pass, three times she would fail. Okay? Now, Bailey holds all the hearts from a standard deck of 52 playing cards. He asks Morgan. Okay, Alex, I need you to pay attention here. He asks Morgan to choose a single card without looking. Determine the odds in favor of Morgan choosing a face card. Okay, do it on your own. What are the odds in favor of Morgan choosing a face card? So that's number one. And then I want you to do two as well. What are the odds against? And three, what's the probability of getting a face card? So one is odds four, right? Okay, so just putting up your hand, what would be your guess for odds four? Okay, so putting up your hand, don't yell it out. Anyone got a got a guess? Yes? Okay. So three to ten. Okay, now explain your three. Okay, so there's three. Now, remember, she's just holding how many cards? Okay, she's holding 13 cards. So we got three or face. And what would I call 10? Not face cards, right? What would be the odds against her getting a face card? 10 to 3. What is the probability of her getting a face card? 3 over 13. Again, is it hard stuff? No, but if you haven't been showing up, yeah, you wouldn't get it. You wouldn't get this question right. Okay. So, 
A computer randomly selects university students' name from a university database to award a hundred dollar gift certificate for the bookstore. The odds against the selected student being male are 57 to 43. So this would be what I would say I could say would be right on the diploma. Okay. And they might just ask for it in decimal, the probability, and you would just write that into your numerical response. So what's the probability that the randomly selected university student would, will be male? Okay, so this, to me, would be a really good diploma question. Okay, it's not ridiculous, it's not tricky, but it would be very hard to do for for students that haven't been doing this stuff. Tan? Okay. Well tell me first of all what how'd you get your forty three? Okay. Okay, because this is males, right? So probability of male would be the number of males over the total. 43 out of 100. So this is what you'd be writing in your numerical response, right? 0 0.43. Again, like I told you, this will be a very fast part of your diploma. I mean, how long does that take, right? But it does take some knowledge to be able to do this one. And uh, you have to understand the odds against Odds against would mean this must be female, right? Odds against will, odds against male means it must be female to male. If it was odds for, right, that first one is what we're going to count. Okay, make sense? Next, hockey game has ended in a tie, five minute overtime period, so the winner will be decided by shootout. The coach must decide whether Ellen or Brittany should go first in the shootout. The coach would prefer to use her best score first. So she will base the decision on the player's shootout records. Okay, this one's like almost too easy. Okay, I think, I think a person that uh, hasn't been showing up all year would get this question. No? What's, like who would you, uh, if, you d if you didn't know how to do this question, like what would you just do? Yeah. Like Ellen, go 8 out of 13, and that's 0 0.615. Brittany would be 10 out of 17, 0 0.588, and I would say Ellen should shoot first. Right? So uh, there won't be... This one is uh, pretty easy. Now, how would you do, Ellen? So, what are the odds, Ellen, would miss? That's a better question. The odds Ellen would miss. Write it down. See if you could get that one. Okay, don't yell it out. The odds Ellen would miss. And how about the odds Brittany would score? These would be diploma questions. I think it's fair to say that the way this question was asked, a grade 10 could get that question.
Okay, so the odds Ellen would miss. Anyone want to take a stab at that one? Anyone got the guts? No one in this class could get this one. Okay, don't yell it out. Yusuf, did you try it? Yeah. No one else can even answer it, so. One. I got one person in this class that could get this one right. Austin, what will you say? Odds. Odds Ellen would miss. Yes? That's what I get. Five to eight. That's what I, that's you said what 13. I that's what I oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Then give me odds Brittany would score. Ten to seven. Okay. So, what does the five stand for? How did we get? How did I get five? Yeah, because if this is four, right? This is against. So it'd be an eight to five odds she would get the goal. It's a five to eight, she wouldn't, right? Because out of 13 attempts, she missed five. Correct? So that's how I get my five to eight, right? And this is against. Now, Brittany, she, out of the 17, she scored 10 and she missed seven. Okay? Just starting to make sense. You have to make sure that these numbers, right, this is probability. Like this is a really good question for making sure you got them all in your head, right? And odds Brittany wouldn't score, seven to 10, right? Or odds she would miss, because miss is the same thing as not score. So what they're really trying to see is have you mixed up odds with probability? They, there will be a question to see if you know the difference. Okay, so you really want to practice these or you probably still won't understand them. It does take that discomfort of having to go through these, making sure your solutions are out and you're checking each one, right? And again, please don't pack up early so those people that are working can continue working without being distracted.